Hey, what's up folks? If you are just getting into digital photography and therefore editing your images on the computer, you've just opened Lightroom for the first time and it is a little bit confusing, then this is the video for you. Stick around, let's dig into it. I can jump between two screens. That's my laptop screen and that's my face. Um, so yeah, let's jump straight into the laptop screen and have a look around the software. So when you initially open Lightroom, uh, you will be presented with a, um, a screen that looks something like this. This is provided you have actually imported photographs. So if you haven't imported photographs just yet, uh, this screen will basically be blank. You'll be opening your first catalog and you will be shown this prompt basically first off. It will auto load for you um, if you have an, a memory card put into your computer or a hard drive put into your computer. And it's here that you would um, go and import photographs. So on the left hand side here you can see your two hard drives that are plugged in. I have obviously the Mac hard drive that's internal and my working SSD which is just this little guy right over here. It's a one terabyte SSD, it's wicked fast, it's an NVMe drive. Um, you might find yourself going this route. It's very quick, very efficient, but not very big in terms of storage. Um, a lot of people just have the big old um, hard drives, the spinning parts, but that gives you a lot more storage, a lot more bang for buck. Um, but yeah, anyway, so what you'll find is here listed on the left hand side is your files or your hard drives. And in there you can go around and find the photographs that you're actually wanting to uh, import. So uh, let's say for example, all of these are imported, but let's say for example, I wanted to import uh, Mara and Amboseli October 2022. I will come to D850, you can see I've categorized or chronologically uh, ordered everything on the back end of my computer. Um, and so I can come, or on the back end of my hard drive as well. So I can come in here and I can say import. All right, I can push command or uh, control on Windows and just select as many as I like and I can uh, import these photographs uh, there. Um, once you've imported your photographs, provided it's built like this on the back end of your hard drive or your computer, um, you will then end up with something that looks like this on the left hand side here with all the photographs that have been imported and you can then go through each date, through each camera. So you can see I'm shooting this with a D850 and a Z9 and you'll be able to see both cameras there. There are various other ways to import, but I'm gonna keep it simple today. Um, maybe we'll do a deep dive on the different ways to import photographs and catalog uh, your photographs in Lightroom. Anyway, once you're in Lightroom and you've got photographs uh, imported, you'll be presented with a screen such as this with all your photographs um, and two um, bars on each side. So you can see on the left-hand side, this is basically, uh, as we've gone over now, just showing you where your photographs are coming from and where they're being stored and so forth. You then have this main um, grid system of images here um, where uh, you can basically view all the images. Should you want to view an image larger, you can then push E on your keyboard. E to enlarge, G for grid. E for enlarge, G for grid. Um, and when you're in enlarge, you can just use your arrow keys to cycle through photographs quickly. Um, or you can come down here and open that menu there and cycle through your photographs like this. Okay. I think for ease, what I'm going to do is just select one day chair. So let's go with uh, December the 1st, 2022. Uh, this photograph's from the Northern Serengeti. But uh, yeah, if I push G again, that'll take me back to the grid view of all the photographs that I've saved from that day. Okay. If I go E, it will enlarge. And then for all of you that are wanting to jump straight into develop, you push D for develop. And now you'll have your develop module over here. You can also use these buttons up here. You can click on library or you can click on develop. All right, once you're in library, you'll then have to push G to get back to your grid or E to enlarge. I'm gonna reiterate that a few times because it helps a lot when you just have those quick hotkeys uh, all figured out, all right. Um, then on the right-hand side, you will be presented with this. This is in the grid layout or the enlarge layout. You'll see your camera settings, ISO 2000, 300 millimeters, F2.8, and then your shutter speed. Um, and then coming down from there, you can add keywords. Uh, you can have your keyword list um, over here and uh, quick develop, which is something that I never ever use, but uh, it's just where you can quickly give a few things, click up, click down to see if it's a photograph that you would like to kick further down the road. Um, nonetheless, let's close, click quick develop, go into keywording. This is where you can simply just add keywords uh, to your photograph. So for, for example, this one, keywording is another thing that I use too much because I run individual catalogs per trip, but it, should you be running a large catalog over a series of years, um, it does work very well to have keywords set up. So for this one, I could have leopard, for example. 
you know, there's a keyword. I could have uh, Northern Serengeti. There's a keyword. And uh, slowly but surely, you'll see that the keyword list begins to grow. Now, you can add as many as you like. For simplicity, I'd say keep it simple. The species, uh, where it was taken, and if you really want maybe uh, the season, um, was it a male or a female, was it uh, fighting, mating, killing, hunting, whatever it might be, but don't add more than say four or five keywords because it just becomes a bit redundant. Anyway, once you've added keywords, you'll see them start to populate down here. So baby rhino, for example, I can click on that and it will take me to the keywords uh, that have baby rhino attached to it. Not too sure why this one has baby rhino, but uh, this one most definitely. But uh, yeah, anyway, we can go back to leopard quickly. That one was the one that was uh, um, keyworded with leopard. And you can see when I push G, it shows up once again um, in your grid format that this is the only photograph that has the keyword leopard. That won't always be like that. And I can enlarge or go back. Right, once you um, have done some keywording, uh, you can close this over here if you like keywording. Um, and we can basically just go back to, you know, let's go back to that, uh, that full system over here. Um, right, then at the top of this, you have a library filter. You can filter by a number of things like text, attributes, metadata. Metadata is quite a useful one for a lot of people. Um, it will filter your camera, your lenses, X, Y, Z that the photograph was taken on. Obviously, I don't have a photograph uh, selected right now, but yeah, and then we can also just go none. Um, so yeah, metadata is, is a, quite a prolific way that most or a lot of people will uh, catalog and categorize their images. I'm not a big metadata person. Then over here, you have filters um, on the side where you can filter to camera info. You can then choose. You want to filter to the 300, uh, was the 70 to 200, what cameras were involved, X, Y, Z. Now, this gives me limited um, filtering options here because I have already filtered on my back end of setting up my hard drive and so forth. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, I can also filter to rate it for example. So you can see I've given star ratings to each of these and then I can filter to two stars, three stars, four stars or five stars. I can filter to color um, and so forth and so on. All right, I'm going to explain how you set that up in a second but this is where you would filter to. When you're done needing filters you can just go filters off. Okay. Right, so within the grid loop like this or even in large you can give things a star rating. So you can see this photograph has a one star rating. Basically, what I do is when I import photographs, believe me, there was a lot more than 91 photographs taken that day. Let's call it 200. Of the 200, only 91 of them got a one-star rating, and those are the ones that I kept. I then, once I've done my one-star rating, I push G, I go back to filters, and I say unrated. Essentially, what's going to show up here is all the photographs that didn't get a one-star rating. I would then select all of them and delete them or remove them completely from the hard drive or from Lightroom, whichever you prefer. That's the way that I delete. A lot of people will push X to um, um, basically remove photographs and then delete those, um, those redundant photographs um, later on. Nonetheless, let's quickly turn off our filters. And, oh, not flagged, filters off. And uh, have a look. So you can see one star. If I wanted to give this photo a two star, just push two, three, four, five. All right, it only goes up to five, so I can't go much more than that. So, for example, once I've edited a photograph and I'm quite happy to show the world what that photograph looks like, I give it a three-star rating. So, generally speaking, I work with three ratings, either zero, one, or three. Zero would mean the photograph's going to be deleted. One would mean it's going to be kept. And three would mean that it's going to actually be shown to the world. Okay. Now, you can also uh, set a color to this, if you like. You can just set, set color label. Uh, you can set the rating the long way around color label, you can set it to red, you can set it to green, you can set it to whatever sort of color is within this list here. Um, and then you can use the filters. So you can say uh, rated, um, I just want to see the reds, and there we go, you can see reds are now there. I just want to see three stars, I don't want to see reds anymore, there's my three stars. I only want to see one stars, X, Y, Z, so one or greater stars. So that's kind of a, a quick dive into the filtering aspect, um, or rating and filtering aspect, or color coding and filtering aspect of Lightroom. Uh, pretty powerful, pretty useful, and please start trying to um, integrate it into your workflow from the get-go, because this is something I've come up with over years. I know it sounds pretty simple, but it takes you a while to get to terms with this, uh, this software. All right, so let's quickly close that down. Uh, let's. Wait, sorry, let's keep that one open. 
Let's select this photograph, for example. Now, down here, you can see there's a couple of hotkeys or quick buttons. You can obviously sw switch between enlarge or grid. Um, by the way, when you are in grid, you can change the size of the thumbnails. You can make them really big. You can make them really small. I like to work on sort of this, maybe three or uh, four or five images per row. Um, then next to that, you can click on enlarge. So instead of pushing E or G, you can just click grid or um, um, uh, click on the grid or click on enlarge or push enlarge or push push uh, grid. G for grid, E for enlarge, once again. You can then compare photographs. So if you wanted to, you can select photographs to compare. Um, and then over here, you can select more photographs to compare and just have a layout. Um, and then the smiley face, who people. I didn't know about that one. I've never used it. I'm a wildlife photographer. Anyway, so that kind of explains those icons down there in a roundabout way, or really the ones you need to take a care of or, or uh, take note of. Um, and that's, that's about that. Then further down here, you have this uh, layout. We did go briefly through it, but essentially you can just scroll through your images like this really quickly. It does help when you're in the enlarge. Uh, you can scroll through like this quickly and find that photograph. Or in develop, you can scroll through quickly and find that photograph. Now, one thing you will notice is when you push develop, things become a little bit slower. And this is because your computer is uh, it's using a lot more resources um, due to the develop module being open. So let me show you. I'm trying to push quickly here um, on develop. If I was in just an enlarge where the develop module is now closed, I can cycle through these photographs wicked quickly. No problem, no lag, things like that. Okay. Um, so that kind of uh, explains this bottom piece here. You will um, be able to like right click on a photograph or double tap on a photograph, enhance it, so forth, and, and do so certain things um, where this makes it quite easy. For example, if you would like to take the edits you performed on this photograph here, you could go to develop settings, copy settings, um, select what you would like to copy from that developed uh, photograph, and then you can go here and you can say paste settings. Um, so if you have like a series of photographs, for example, that you kind of want edited the exact same way, maybe a sequence, that's how you would make sure that you keep a, a fairly similar edit across uh, the range of images. You will, of course, have to uh, fine tune that and make sure because there's always ambient light changes and so on. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the quick layout um, of Lightroom as you open it. Now, if you would like to close these, you just click on those little arrows and it closes them down um, and gives you a much bigger photograph. Of course, when you hover the mouse here, it does open once again. When you hover the mouse there, it opens once again. And when you hover there, it opens there once again. Those quick little buttons don't go away. And the only way that you get back to getting your filter at the back here, because this stumps a lot of people, is by either pushing G or clicking on that grid button down there. All right. There you can see your filters open up once again um, and so on. Okay. Now, up here, you have a map feature. This only really works if you're geotagging your photographs. I don't geotag them. I know Canon, Sony's, they kind of do it automatically. Nikon, uh, you always needed a bit of an adapter. I shoot Nikon, by the way. You always needed an adapter to do it. The new cameras have it built in. But as you can see, I'm not geotagging. But this will literally show you where your photographs are taken. It's a pretty cool feature. It's pretty redundant, but a lot of people like this sort of stuff. So, yeah. Um, never clicked on book before. Don't know what it does. Doesn't matter. It's redundant. Uh, but it's now giving me a spinning wheel of death. So I guess this is a template to create certain things. Um, slideshow, print. Um, print I use quite a bit when I do printing. It's a beautiful way, a very elegant way of setting up your prints, high quality prints. For those of you that are interested, I shoot with a Canon, I mean, I print with a Canon Pixma 100S and it prints A3 Plus and it prints them beautifully. So this is how you would make sure your margins are perfect, your color is perfect, X, Y, Z. Okay. Um, right, so let's quickly do a, a, a little bit of a look around the develop module. So let's say this photograph over here, E to enlarge, is a photograph that you would want to develop. I wouldn't probably develop it, but there it is. So let's push D, D for develop, or you can click on D over there. So you then present it with your develop module over here on the, on the right-hand side. And if you need to, you can also open this here, and it gives you um, your small thumbnail over there to work with. All right, this is where you can zoom in 100%, 50%, or really just choose whatever it is you would like to zoom into. 1600%, madness. But uh, yeah, it allows you to do things like that. So let's just set this back to something reasonable, like 50%, and those are just quick hotkeys. So if you want a pixel peep, you can do that. If you just want to see what effect your brush is maybe having, you can do that. And then when you're done, you can just click fit and click it back out, okay? You can also just come to the image and click in, and it will zoom in and click in and it will zoom in. If you're wanting that to zoom into 100% like I usually do, then just take that, change that to 100% and uh, you will now see that you will click in 
to 100%. Okay. Then below that you have presets. For those of you that do like using presets, I know a lot of like wedding photographers, people photographers, you can just click here and add a preset, you know, um, and then edit that preset from there. So it's really uh, up to you how you would like to do this. You can see Adobe does include a number of presets. You can buy presets from people um, and so on. Look, as a wildlife photographer, I always believe that you should be editing your own photographs for their own merits and not applying a preset. What you might eventually find is when you become very accustomed to the way that you like to edit your photographs, you can develop your own preset, but that's a whole nother story. And then essentially what happens is when you import your photographs, your preset is applied to that photograph uh, straight away and uh, and so on then you just have to fine-tune from there so as I say presets not a big thing that I use but uh, if you're a wedding photographer people photographer food photographer you might find very good value from that then just below that you get history so you can do all manner of things by the way let me reset this photograph you can come here and do this and do that and whatever whatever pull different sliders all over and it will keep all of your history from the point of importation so it's uh, it's very very interesting very useful this i use it all the time to step back or go back see where i came from maybe a crop didn't work maybe a uh, whatever didn't work a mask didn't work you just want to quickly go back in time and change that that's where you'll do this okay um Right, then on to, we can close that and hover over it, all right, um, and so forth. One thing that does um, help is um, sometimes you just need to zoom into a particular part of the photograph and drag it around. This does help quite a bit. Uh, of course, you can do this here and just use your two fingers to drag around the image. Okay. Then let's close that. Uh, remember, this is still down here. Um, on the right-hand side here, you have your develop module, the really nitty-gritty of it. Uh, up here, you have the basic developments, or what I like to call global. You then have your cropping over there. You then have cloning and stamping and removing. And then you have red eye. I've never used this. I suppose it works for people when you use a cheap flash, uh, things that give you red eye. Then you can go and get rid of it there. And then over here, you have the big one, masking. All right, this is a whole video by itself. I mean, everything here is a whole video by itself, but this is just basically for you now. Um, and then below that, you get your basic, um, which is where you're going to change things like exposure, vibrance, saturation, you know, so forth and so on. This is taking effect across the whole image, so watch out. As you can see, everything sharpens with you when you push up texture. A lot of the time, you don't want to have everything get texturized. You just want something very specific to be texturized. That's where you would mask that thing like your subject and add the texture uh, there. So you can see Adobe is working on its AI. Um, in order to pick up what exactly was your subject within your photograph and uh, it's getting better and better. Um, so when you do that, now you can see just the little lines get that texture added to them. All right. Um, below that you get tone curves. This is um, you know, really handy if you're wanting to bring out the highlights, numb down the shadows, or bring up the shadows, numb down the highlights. Um, yeah, so dig into that. You then get your color, um, HSL and color. Um, I really just use color, but yeah, you can change the hue, saturation, and so forth, and luminance of different colors. Uh, color grading, um, another big one that a lot of people use, I think in like the architectural photography world, maybe event photography, um, not something we use too much in wildlife, although some of you I'm sure do. Um, detail, obviously where you can sharpen things. Below that is lens correction. Click on the profile, it enables the profile. You can see it automatically picks up the, um, the lens you were shooting through. A brief summary of this is remember, photographs are square in nature, as you can see, but it's taken through a round lens. Kind of strange that you get a square. So you've got to remember there is going to be some correcting that's needing to take place. Um, around the edges of those photographs. Very often photographs will warp in or warp out and this corrects that, okay. Um, and then below that you get uh, transform, not something that I use very often. It's uh, definitely gonna help if you're an architectural sort of person, someone that's trying to get dead straight lines out of something, you know. Uh, effects, this is where you'll add things like post-crop vignetting. Uh, does work sat in a subtle way, very nicely. And then you get calibration, where you're going to calibrate your RGB sensor within your, uh, within your camera. Um, well, basically what I mean by that is every camera sensor that's in the camera is made up of RGB, red, green, and blue. Um, and it's basically those three colors that come together to produce all the colors you see within this photograph. And I find this very interesting, very useful here when I'm trying to edit more warmth or less warmth into my photographs. Um, so yeah, feel free to, to watch a few YouTube videos on that and dig into it because it is really, really um, useful and quite powerful. So yeah, back to grid. There it is. We can open up these menus. So yeah, that's just a quick brief um, sort of walk around of what Lightroom is. Uh, please feel free to post your comments below. 
and I'll happily have a look at them and come back to you if you have any questions. Um, of course, Lightroom is far, far, far more in depth than what I've just shown you, but hopefully this gives you a, a starting point on how you can use it and uh, how you can evolve, or well, hopefully you'll find a way to evolve from here. Anyway, until the next one, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Catch you soon. Cheers.